Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at how you build and use and deploy libraries. So let's get to it. So what exactly is a library? Well, the best definition for me probably is that it's a collection of functionality that you wrap inside of a package, and you can then reuse that package across multiple projects. So let's try and do that. So we'll start by creating a new project. We'll call it My Automation. And we'll just open the main workflow inside this automation. And we'll add a couple of activities. The first one is going to be a simple assign activity. And this assign activity will assign to a new variable that we call result. It'll assign the result of the calculation that is 2 plus 2. And we'll need to change the data type of the result variable because it is of type string and it needs to be of type integer. So this is our automation, except we want to do one more thing. We want to save the result to a text file. So we will select the right folder and we will call the text file result.txt. And what we'll write into the results file is the result variable converted to a string. So now we have an automation that should run without any errors. And if we go to the result file folder, uh, we can see that the folder is empty. And if we run the automation very quickly, we can see that hopefully it created a new file and the result is four. So let's jump back into studio. Now this very advanced calculation we want to extract into a library because we want to use this calculation across multiple automations. So we'll open a new project in your path studio. And that will be a library project. And we'll call it my calculation library. And inside this project, we have a new activity file here, and we'll call this one, or rename it to add numbers. And if we open it, we will give it two arguments going in, and that number one will be of type integer. The next one will be also in number two and also an integer. And then we'll create the result argument. And that would be an outgoing argument called out underscore result direction set to out and also of data type integer. So what we'll do inside of here is we will assign to the out result argument the sum of the in number one plus in number two. And that really concludes uh, what this library is going to do for now. So we'll save this library. And if we go to our orchestrator and go to the tenant, go to packages, we can see that we don't have any packages. We don't have any libraries. But if we then go back to our library project in studio and publish this, and we'll just publish it to our tenant. And hopefully that succeeds. It did. It published a new library called My Calculation Library version 101. We press OK, go to our tenant, and refresh the screen. And we can see that now we have the calculation library up here. If we now go back to the first project, the My Automation project, and instead of doing this calculation here, we want to actually use the library that we just built. First of all, we'll delete this assign activity. Then we'll go to the package manager and we will go to our tenant feed here. And we can see that we have now a my calculation library by me, uh, version 101. We'll select it, click install and save. And as soon as we do that and go back to our activities pane in studio in just a second, Right here, if we collapse everything else, we can see that now we have a group here called My Calculation Library. And inside of that, we have an Add Numbers activity. If we drag that in, we can see that the Add Numbers, uh, well, it's just an activity. And over here in the Properties pane, we can see the different arguments that we defined, the in number one, in number two, and the out result argument. So in number one, we'll set to two. In number two, we'll set to two as well. And then result, we will assign that to the result variable that we already have. 
So the rest of the automation isn't going to change. It's just that now we're using this add numbers activity from the library. Actually, we'll change this a little bit just so we can see that the file actually changes. And if we now go to our file folder, we can see that the result is now seven. So this is a very simple example of how you actually use a library. But let's dig just a little bit deeper. So what we'll do is we'll publish this automation. And the version number is 101 as the new version. And we'll publish that to our tenant as well. And hopefully that goes well. It did. And if we go to our orchestrator and go to the packages page, we can see that we have my automation. View the versions. It's 101 a few seconds ago. And a couple of minutes ago, I also deployed another automation called my other automation. And that is also version 101. And what these two have in common is that if we do an explore package on them and expand the version that we have deployed, the latest version, we can see the dependencies lists the my calculation library version 101, and it should do that on both of them. And it does. This is a really good example of sort of promoting reuse through the use of libraries because we have two automations and instead of programming the math, and I know it's a very simple math we're doing here, but instead of programming it inside of each of the automation, we have it all in one library that both of those automations use. And in this case, it's just two automations. It could be tens or hundreds of automations that use a common library inside of your organization. So what happens if something changes inside of the library? Well, let's try and make some changes. We'll go back into Studio and we'll go to the Libraries project. And we're not actually going to make any changes to the calculations as such. What we're going to do is we're simply going to publish the project again. And the reason why we want to do that is we get a new version, 102. And if we go to my automation project here and go into the package manager and go to the tenant feed, we can see that now there's actually another version of this library available. And we could, of course, select this new library and say we want to update it and then click Save. We're not going to do that. We're going to do something else. Because we have a lot of projects, or at least two projects, using the library that has some changes to it. So what we'll do is we will, inside of our calculation library project, inside of here, we can go to the home screen and the tools page. And up here, we have this project dependencies mass update tool. And what this tool does is it checks what projects are using a certain version of a library, and then it can update those projects to the new version of the library. And that includes both inside of your development folders, inside of your Git repository, and also it will actually build and deploy new versions of that project to the tenant so that you don't have to go through each of the projects and do a new redeployment. So we'll try and do that. And inside the tool here, uh, it's just asking us, where do you want to look for dependencies to update? We'll click Next, and we'll just type in My Calculation Library, and it should find, or search for it, and it should find it. And this is the one we want to try to search for projects to update. We'll just search for files locally inside the folder that holds all of our projects. We'll click Next. And we can say that my automation needs to be updated and also my other automation needs to be updated. And then it will ask us if we want to publish these to the tenant and stuff like that. And we do. So we confirm. And we can see that my automation was successfully updated. So was the my other automation. If we click OK. And if we open a new instance of UiPath Studio and open the My Automation project, we can see if we go to the Project tab and look inside the dependencies, we can see that now it's using My Calculation Library version 102. If we go to our orchestrator, and refresh the page here, we can see that now we have a 102 version of the new library. But also if we go to the packages, and if we look inside the Explore Package option, we can see that now there's a version 102 of this automation. And also inside the dependencies of that, we can see that it's using the My Calculation Library 102. If we go to the other automation, we should see the same thing that there's now a version 102 of the automation, 
and in the dependencies it's using the new version of the library. So that's a quick look at how to use libraries and how to update them using the project dependencies mass update tool. And that's a really long name for a tool, but it's a really useful tool when deploying these uh, library updates. So if you like this thought of reusing stuff like this, I think you should take a look at the video I'm popping up on the screen now. And if you can't see it, there's also a link in the description below. That is a two part video about the object repository in UiPath Studio. And the object repository is a, a new way it was introduced last year, I believe, of defining descriptors or selectors, if you will, inside of Studio and saving those inside libraries so you can reuse selectors across multiple projects. So if you have once defined a really tricky selector for some screen element, then you can reuse that selector across projects by using libraries. So take a look at that. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please give it a like and hit the notification bell as well. So thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.